So that's what we're starting with. The only reason there's any grass here is because of the hay they've fed mm. Oh, you can see how much moisture's got down. It's only got... Yeah. And that's only as far as the... As far as the bloody hoof of the horse breaks up, really. Yeah, yeah. So any, anywhere below, what, an inch and a half, there's basically no organic matter. Yeah. The way they've been feeding now, it's actually worse. Because they've been at, standing here. Wow, yeah, if you look at that. I'll crack it with the crowbar and see what, uh, what happens. Same deal, it hasn't seen moisture in years. Mm. Nothing below there, is there? No. A little bit, but nothing to... Oh, we'll see the progress. Mm. Okay, we've had 36 millimetres of rain and I just want to have a look at this soil with a bit of moisture. See the compacted layers. It will be quite a fertile soil though. Got a bit of rehabilitating going on in the background, which we'll have a look at in a minute. But you can see there it's still quite hard.
So actually we're using the rehabilitator here with the seed box. So in one pass, we're going from this to this. see how much it's lifted the soil profile, crumbled underneath, and in this soil, one pass, it's giving a very nice finish. So it really cracks up those compacted layers. A clump like that, as it gets a bit of rain, a bit of sun, a bit of weathering, another tined implement through, preferably the rehabilitator with the tusk rollers on the back, and uh, that'll crumble up. We'll get a bit more footage of the rehabilitator and the cedar. Looks as though you could form it up and just about plant vegetables in it now. So we're heating one lot of water here. We're starting to heat while I've got another lot stirring off. So I'm going to put the first spray on the new block. I'll put out two acres worth at a time. You can see they've got a copper, rainwater, heated with gas, that's a three ring burner. Uh, when the water's colder, that takes around 20 minutes to get to body temperature. So we warm the water to 35 degrees before we uh, put it in the stirring machine. Put the 500 in and stir for exactly one hour. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the stirring machine in action. Smaller stirring machine, a two acre. Very important on a stirring machine that the changeover is driven by the vortex. Now that's done with a float in the riser on the right hand side there. A little mechanism that rises with the vortex, turns the machine off, and as the vortex subsides, it turns it back on again while that switch over here is setting the next direction uh, for the vortex when it changes over.
come and take me spraying so you can get to see what happens there. Second knapsack, which is quite good, quite good quality. That's the wells. Um, this one traditionally was sprayed out of a, a double nozzle, but I found it gave too much of a mist. Now I use a single stream and move it from side to side to form the droplet. Hopefully we'll see that one in action as well. There are earlier pictures. This was a horse paddock, a very compacted. It is a, a very good market gardening potential uh, um, alluvial flats. Uh, it was uh, ploughed with the um, rehabilitator, and um, I want to see what structure the roots are making at this stage. So. I it's very easy to get in anywhere here while well, it's been been plowed 50 centimeters deep and I just want to see what the roots are like they come quite close um, it's not quite light enough yet we should maybe go where the Sun is but um, there is structure here just here these are still lumps from the original soil where it all compacted absolutely no structure whatsoever um, uh, just uh, soil but when I dig out now you see that is already beautifully transformed all this here um, has has the beginning structure and the plants that is the plant roots they're quite hard to pull out they've um, it is all structured it was like sand black sand um, of course being very rich and now here that is beautiful structure and that is what I wanted to see um, from the sand all this is built into little lumps um, uh, by the roots and the 500 and it goes down I've pulled it out it should be washed out you see here the roots go right in and I wanted to see how this structures now um, if you use a disc or rotary hole well first of all I should say what is structured here is like the bricks in a house that is built by microbes in conjunction with the worms very tight you see I can look at how this moves how it is all connected um, conventionally there would be just very little root um, and um, if you use a rotary hoe or disc you pulverize that soil further like it was originally here's a bit that is not their structure a little but that is what it was and you see there is no the structure of that is totally different to this finely newly built soil this is still just like crushed rock and I wanted to see how the crushed rock develops into that with the first roots that's more important than what is growing up here at this stage yes now if you mince say you have a house made of bricks um, if there has a tree that fell out or there was some other damage to the house the bricks can be cleaned and can be rebuilt 
The bricks in that case are like the little lumps here that are grown together. Um, but if you pulverize the bricks, the microbes and worms, if you grow something again, have to first create this. Um, it's much harder when the bricks have been made into sand than if the bricks that is this here is left. And when you plow, you should never use anything that pulverizes, if possible. Uh, sometimes you can't avoid it, but retain this. And once um, this is high, the green manure, and it has been mulched, and then plowed with, the, with that um, plow, this part will be retained. The microbes don't have to remake all that, which takes a lot of time. Um, you are just cleaning the bricks, as it were, and you can rebuild. Whereas if you make that into dust, then you lose the lot and you have to start with lumps like that again, because as soon as water gets onto the destroyed soil, well, all of this will set down each time and uh, become an even harder uh, concrete. And I wanted to see how with the first crop there has been that refined building development of, of um, uh, not any more sand out from rock but um, beautifully um, manufactured uh, by microbes and worms, mainly microbes in this case, and, and fungi, a whole lot of creatures, um, uh, how the soil has already become biological. Now, if that is the case now, and the crop is only started, um, uh, it will have, uh, has had no warm weather yet to grow, and before that it had no water. It was very, very dry from the drought. That is a very good start, and from that I wanted to determine when uh, uh, Daryl can start to actually grow grow vegetables and uh, this being as it is we can just try it somewhere else um, uh, see the top here is terrible that is still rocks but where the roots have worked and the 500 is quite hard to yes. break uh, and then it breaks into nothing just into sand um, uh, where we have the activity that I have shown <coughs> before um, he may have to have a second green manure crop, it will improve it, but it's already gone down at least this far, um, maybe much further. The one root showed, uh, um, I don't want to dig too much and destroy anything. Do you want to uh, go to where it's lighter? Well, yeah, we might see better, yeah. Um, uh, but all on top here is, uh, look at this, uh, that's just a rock. That is what it was at first. And there is absolutely no structure. It is just, uh, well, like a piece a of concrete. Yeah, a brick. Yes. Yeah. Uh, whereas inside, look at these. They are everywhere here on top. That is the old stuff. Here it's already a little better. Um, but uh, where the growth is sparse here, um, but it hasn't had a chance yet. Well, we'll just dig here and you have the light. Uh, and you look here immediately, there's a big worm, uh, there's a worm, uh, it has structured very nicely and quite down. Mm. So it could be that you could even grow a crop after this has really developed more. Um, see that is eight inches in. Yes. Um, uh, just the very top, <laughs> the rocks that are there. Uh, the next rehabilitator might well just exactly crumble. oh this will all go <laughs> um, it it has been winter first no rain and uh, no warmth yet and yet the soil is already so developed that is what I wanted to see Very I good. think you could this crop I expect will go at least this high yes and um, if you work that in spray f prepared 500 rework it a fortnight later when some of the green stuff that will be a huge bulk is breaking down or has broken down go through it again spray a second time i think you can grow vegetables very soon
see what we're trying to achieve here is to take the top off this grain because there's still quite a bit of growth to be had from the uh, legumes, the peas just here and then the vetch this one just here and there's still a lot of moisture in the soil so we take the top off the grain, expose the legumes to more light uh, we'll get a push from them and a new push of root growth uh, after I've topped this I'll spray prepared 500 and I think I'll give it around about another month's growth before working it uh, all in the uh, rehabilitator. In patches there's also some clovers and ryes uh, so they'll pu push through with a bit more light and uh, it'll save going through the process of rehabilitating the whole lot and sowing another green manure crop. So we'll actually save a little bit of money on seed as well as uh, saving a little bit of time so we'll keep an eye on it and see how it goes.